Elements Homebrew coming at ya. Well, we've, we've moved into fall. We're definitely moving towards that winter time. It has gotten kind of really gloomy here today in Oregon. I gotta tell you, it, it has cooled down quite a bit. So now I can really justify my stouts. <laughs> and I had one that I bought a little while ago and set aside. I heard that these would age really well. This is from Great Divide. This is the Oatmeal Yeti Stout. And you know, the Yeti series has been fantastic. This one just sounds wonderful and has some unique qualities to it as well. It is a 9.5% ABV beer. It's a seasonal of theirs. But what, besides putting in a lot of uh, rolled oats in it, they've added a small amount of raisins which makes you think you're going to get some dark fruits along with some real smooth, creamy texture. So I'm going to get through the foil on this one and get it opened up and we'll give it a try. Uh, I may have overdone the pour because I've got like a finger and a half of head on this. I was a little aggressive on it, I'll admit. <laughs> it's a beautiful head though, look at that. It is... Um, it's uh, almost in that mocha color, really. It's, it's, it's darker than a khaki, that's for sure. Really beautiful, creamy looking. And the beer itself is just dark, dark. It really is. I don't know if it's black because my lighting's not real strong here, but I would say it's completely opaque. So very dark beer indeed. Let's get a nose on it. Ooh. Okay, well... I get dark chocolate, like dark cocoa nibs. Uh, I get some espresso on that. Uh, I can tell the oatmeal's in it, but I also get dark fruits on it. it. It gives me a hint of almost an oatmeal cookie as well. So there, there definitely is a lot of rolled oats on this as well. Um, and they're really dark malts, some really dark, dark malts on it. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this one tastes. Um, all right, so cheers, here we go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, a lot of those things that you kind of expected is very smooth, very creamy, rich, almost a chewy texture, really nice. Um, I'm down here cupping it to warm it some more. Um, you, you definitely get the dark, like charred molds. Uh, definitely some char flavor on that. Uh, it's like a dark, semi-sweet chocolate. Uh, very rich. A little bit of espresso on that. And, I, and you do get some dark fruits. I'm going to try it again here. Wow. It's almost viscous. I mean, it's not quite that thick, but this is a full body for sure. I mean... It has some qualities of a sauce almost, you know, a thin sauce. Um, you do get some hot bite though. There is some hot bitterness on, on the backside particularly, but it is definitely there. It builds a little bit in the mouth. And I think that adds to creating that like dark char type flavor. But not unpleasant at all. I mean, this is, this is really nice. I think there's even like a hint of vanilla. kind of gives me that impression it might not be there but hey but it does give me that impression I'll tell you yeah the raisins add to it I think it adds some sweetness uh, kind of like dark fruit it doesn't come off real strong but it gives it a little bit of unique sweetness as well if it wasn't for that bitterness that gives it that dark char taste you could almost go towards like in the aroma towards that chocolate oatmeal cookie something I love uh, I'm hinting right now to my wife. That sounds really good. And um, it, uh, it has molasses in it. I was trying to pick up some of these other flavors. There's uh, some molasses notes in there. And just the slightest hint of anise as well. All right, I'm going to take a little time with this one and come back. This, this is drinking really nice. I let this warm up quite a bit. I'm, I'm by a fireplace here. Uh, use that to my advantage. And it's just even more creamy, more full flavor. 
coating the mouth, more of that chewy texture. Very, very rich. All the description I gave you earlier apply. Um, I'm enjoying it. My wife says it's not anise, it's anise. I've been pronouncing that wrong. But let me tell you, uh, this, is, this is one rich, fantastic beer. I'm inclined to, to get myself some ice cream and pour some of this over the top, maybe add some brandy in. I mean, it, it, just, it just sounds like this could become a one, one dessert float or beer kind of thing. Ugh. I might try it. I think I will. Anyway. <laughs> All right, let's get on to rating. The, the char is a little stronger than I would like it to be, but it's it's a very, very good stout. It's it's in the excellent category, I've got to say, um, because the texture on it, how thick and rich it is, it's, it's just very good. I think that this could be one that could improve with age. I think as an imperial stout, I'm going to give this one a 93. Yeah, I'm, overall, it's kind of tough, you know. I, I kind of, I wish it had more... Uh, less of the bitterness, honestly, uh, this time around. I love that bitterness and yeti. I wish it had a little less of the bitterness to let the sweetness kind of take over, give it a little more of that chocolate chip cookie. You know, that's a personal preference, but that's what the overall rating is all about with me. It's just my personal taste. Still, I'm staying in the excellent range. Um, I'm giving this one a 91 of my overall. There are a few things that uh, I'd probably prefer to have before it, but I, I sure wouldn't turn a glass down. And, and I would encourage anyone that to maybe pick up some bottles if you can still find it and set some aside because I think this would age well. I think as it mellows and the hops mellow down, the bitterness will subside and just like those flavors I'm describing will become stronger. So anyway, wow, from Clement's Home Brew, life is too short to drink cheap beer and I will see you in the next Fireside Beer Review. See ya.